All right, welcome back to the foundation. We're back with with David and, and David. Yep, and David. So, uh, Don is yet again sick, so who knows when he'll be back. So, um, the last time he was with us, he was getting a little hoarse. Yeah, yeah. Resting from talking too much. <laughs> anyway, so we're going to be. Uh, in Matthew chapter 9, verse 18, starting verse 18. We'll see where we go from there. Uh, this is the story of the bleeding woman that Jesus heals just by touching the hem of, of his garment. And David, I believe you have a transition. Yes. Uh, you know, last week, uh, or the last session we had, uh, Jesus had brought across the Sea of Galilee to the east shore yes and that's where he run the demons into the pigs and went over the cliff and, and everybody told him to leave so he gets yep. back in the boat and he's going back to the west shore it was a dark and stormy night well i don't think it was dark and stormy on the way back <laughs> <laughs> but so here we go with the, our transition it says as with the reports of the exorcism of Legion, Matthew records the healing of Jairus' daughter and of a woman <clears throat> with a hemorrhage is considerably less detailed than do Mark and Luke. Matthew's emphasis is on the role of faith in the healings rather than on the manner in which they were accomplished. While Mark relates Jesus' foreign language phrase, Aletha Humi in Mark 5.41, which we'll read into. Matthew omits such detail, possibly because it resembles incantations of the Hellenistic magic text. Instead, he reports the additional healings of two blind men and a new demon-possessed man. <laughs> Again, explicitly emphasizes the blind man's faith keeping a secret of the new life given Jairus's previously deceased daughter would have been impossible. So some have thought that when Jesus charged her parents to tell no one what had happened, he was referring specifically to what had transpired in the girl's room. Perhaps Jesus wanted to leave open the possibility of the minds of some that the girl had actually only been sleeping. At least his fame for raising the dead should become a hindrance to his continuing ministry. Mm -hmm. I was wondering about that, reading that story about yeah. raising Jerry's going to tell no one. Of course, we need to get into that a little bit. Yep. All right, go, go ahead, David. You want me to read the scripture? Yeah, because you have, you have 18, well, you have 27 through 34, right? Yeah, I have the, I have, in, in Matthew chapter 8, we have uh, two more events that Jesus did that's not in Mark and in Luke. And of course, David's chronological book uh, goes ahead and does the, 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 the three stories and then puts those two at the end where mine is pushed right into Matthew 8 so you don't have to go hunt it up again. So my Bible's better. Well, <laughs> you know what the Bible does say though, David? Money's the root of all evil. <laughs> <laughs> But out with the old and in with the new. Now you tried to pull that on me before. <laughs> okay. Uh, starting in uh, verse 18, Matthew chapter 8. Now when Jesus saw a crowd around him, he gave orders to cast off for the other side of the Sea of Galilee. Then on his way to board the boat, a scribe who was a respected an authoritative interpreter of the law came and said to him, 
Master, I will accompany you as your student wherever you go. Next page. Jesus replied to him, Foxes have holes and the birds of the air have nests, but the Son of Man has nowhere to lay his head. Another of these disciples said to him, Lord, let me first go and bury my father and collect my inheritance. But Jesus said to him, Follow me, believing in me as master and teacher, and allow the spiritually dead to bury their own dead. When he got into the boat, his disciples followed him. And suddenly a violent storm across across on the sea. <laughs> so that the boat was no being I didn't know that, covered by the, the waves, and Jesus yeah. was sleeping. I'm confused. <laughs> I'm in Matthew eight. <laughs> Am I in the wrong spot? <laughs> yep. Oh, I'm sorry, folks. I'm both in Matthew 9. I don't know. Oh, I'm man. going back. I'm, I turned the motor back around, didn't I? Oh, okay, man. here we go. Here we go. Oh, they man. They want nothing about healing in that, that, that part right there. Okay. Okay. Oh, you. <laughs> <laughs> well, you said you make about the same thing you wanted to. <laughs> oh man, all right. <laughs> You're not through yet. Don't, don't edit this. <coughs> Except I was pronouncing the words right. Okay. While he was saying these things to the enemy ruler, the synagogue official, he entered the house and kneeled down. And worshiped him, saying, My daughter has just now died, but come and lay your hand on her, and she will live. Jesus got up and began to accompany the ruler with his disciples. Then a woman who had suffered from a hemorrhage for 12 years came up behind him and touched the tassel fringe of his outer robe, for she had been saying to herself, If I can only touch his outer robe, I will be healed. But Jesus, turning and seeing her, said, Take courage, daughter. It's the same. Your faith, trust, and confidence has made you well. And at once, the woman was completely healed. When Jesus came to the ruler's house and saw the flute players who were professionals, hired mourners, and the grieving crowd making an uproar, he said, go away, for the girl is not dead, but is sleeping. And they laughed and jeered at him. But when the crowd had been sent outside, Jesus went in and took her by the hand, and the girl got up. And the news about this spread throughout all of that district. As Jesus went on from there, two blind men followed him, screaming loudly, Have mercy and compassion on us, son of David. When he went into the house, the blind men came up to him, and Jesus said to them, Do you believe with a deep abiding trust that I am able to do this healing? And they said to him, Yes, Lord. Then he touched their eyes, saying, According to your faith, your trust and confidence in my power, in my ability to heal, it will be done to you. And their eyes were opened. And Jesus sternly warned them, See that no one knows this. But they went out and spread the news about Jesus throughout that whole district. And while they were going away, a mute demon-possessed man was brought to Jesus. And when the demon was driven out by Jesus, the mute man spoke, 
and the crowd wondered in amazement, saying, Never before has anything like this miracle been seen in Israel. But the Pharisees were saying, He cast out the demons by the power of the ruler of demons. Hmm. Uh, hiring, hiring professional mourners for a funeral. <laughs> <Yeah. laughs> But, uh, you know, like the transition was telling, uh, Jesus here is em uh, emphasizing faith in, in what Matthew is writing. Uh, I remember this, the scene in The Chosen about this woman. Yeah. And in, 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 in The Chosen, she made her living by doing people's laundry. And she hid the fact that she had this blood issue. Oh, she, she hid it. She hid the fact. Oh, the reason the the reason for it is, if uh, she is not supposed, to, everything that she touched would be defiled. Right, because she would be considered unclean. Unclean. Yeah. Okay. So that's why she had to keep that secret about her, her situation. Yeah. Okay. Twelve years is a long time to keep a secret. Yeah. I mean, well, I don't know. Some people take some to the grave with them. I mean, but she's still having to interact with people if she's doing, if she's making a living, no matter what she's doing. <clears throat> it seemed like laundry would be a, a, a simple way of making some money. Yeah. You're, you're working on your own. You're not working around nobody. And you're, uh, so nobody can see what's going on. And then verse 30, where he tells the blind man, yep. do not let no one know this. For Jesus may have wanted to discourage the masses from coming to him for physical healing alone because his primary purpose was spiritual healing. So, and I think the transition pointed out too, if he's gonna keep it on big crowds, it, it's, 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 it's not going to, uh, it's going to affect his ministry. So that, that's the way I, I take it. So, okay, buddy, shoot. Jesus got into to the boat again and went back to the other side of the lake where a large crowd gathered around him on the shore. Then a leader of, of the local synagogue whose name was Jairus arrived. When he saw Jesus, he fell at his feet, pleading fervently with, with him. My daughter is dying, he said. Please come and lay your hands on her so she can live. So Jesus went with him, and all the people followed, crowding around him. A woman in the crowd had so, suffered for 12 years with constant bleeding, and she suffered a great deal from many doctors. And over the years, she had spent everything she had to pay them, but she had gotten no better. In fact... She had gotten worse. Uh, <clears throat> she heard about Jesus, and so she came up behind through the crowd and touched his robe. For she thought to herself, if I touch his robe, I will be healed. And immediately the bleeding stopped, and she could feel in her body that she had been healed from her terrible condition. So, just a little, a little brush from Jesus's. You know, she. Well, you. Well, it says uh, she touched his outer robe, but over here in the Matthew it says it was a tassel. Yeah, but just a little, little brush or a nudge. No, she intentionally reached and grabbed the tassel that tied his. This, this, this is this tassel is something that uh, just about all Hebrew men wore. 
Uh, it has some kind of religious, uh, you know, connotations yeah. to it. Um, that, that was significant, and that, 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 that she went after that particular thing. Yeah, but it goes on to say Jesus realized at once that healing power had come, <clears throat> gone out of, from him. So he turned around in the crowd and asked, who touched me? That's interesting. You would think that she would have been kind of secretive. That's why I think she just just kind of brushed it. Well, you make it well, sound see, like she, she told it, which makes sense. That's the thing. Is, he could feel this more than just doing this, just grabbing this. Yeah. She grabbed She's grabbing this. She's not touching or rubbing his body, or lightly touching his body. She's grabbing something hanging loose, and he felt that. That's even yeah. more sin. Uh, more, he's more. He was even more sensitive to that than just barely touching like this. True. That, that's that's what's amazing. Yeah. He, he felt that little little bit. It didn't take much. Not much at all. Mm. But he kept <clears throat> looking around to see who had who had done it. Then the frightened the frightened woman, trembling at the realization of what had happened to her, came and fell to her knees in front of him and told him what she had done. And he uh, said to her daughter, "Your faith." Has made you well. Go in peace. You, uh, your suffering is over. While he was still speaking, uh, messengers arrived from the home Jarius, the leader of the synagogue, and they told him, "Your daughter is dead. There's no use <coughs> troubling the master now." But Jesus over overheard them. Uh, and said to Jarius, don't be afraid, just have faith. Then Jesus stopped and wouldn't let anyone go, go with him except Peter, James, and John, the brother of James. When they came to the, uh, to the home of the synagogue leader, Jesus saw the commotion and weeping and wailing. He went inside and asked, how the commotion and weeping? The child isn't dead, just sleeping. Uh, the crowd laughed at, at him, uh, but he made them all leave, and he took the girl's father and mother and his three disciples into the room where the girl was laying. Holding, holding her hand, he said to her, and the girl who was 12 years old immediately stood up and walked around, uh, they were overwhelmed and totally amazed. Jesus gave them strict orders not to tell anyone what had happened. And then he told them to give give her some something to eat. So you go Mark 5. Yeah. Yep. We just did Matthew 9. <laughs> Compared to Matthew with Mark, like the transition said, I think the Mark and Luke would give more details. Mm -hmm. Matthew's more uh, centered around faith. Uh, we see it here in Mark where he gives some orders not to tell anyone, but you don't find that in Matthew. Mm -hmm. But the story of the two blind men in Matthew, he told them not the same thing. Yeah. And the other thing I noticed that it was Peter, James, and John and went in with him. And mm -hmm. I've, I've heard that Mark is the one who was taking Peter's message and writing it down. I can see why uh, Matthew wouldn't have as much information because he wasn't there to see it, but Peter was. Yeah. True. And of course, it talks about how uh, 
they were laughing at him and you know, she was dead. Mm -hmm. you know, they, don't, they don't do that in Matthew. But, uh, right, I see what we were saying now, yeah. Of course, uh, Matthew, Matthew talks about these mourners being professional mourners and flute yeah. players and uh, uh, Mark doesn't say nothing about that. Well, Dad, go ahead and read Luke 8, 40 through 56. What is it? Luke 8, 40 through 56. Luke 8. Now Jesus returned, the crowd welcomed, welcomed him, for well, they were all waiting for him. And there came a man named Jairus, who was a ruler of the synagogue, <clears throat> and falling at Jesus' feet, he employed him to come to his house, for he had only one daughter, about twelve years of age, and she was dying. And Jesus went, and the people pressed around him. And there was a woman who had a discharge of blood for twelve years, and through she had spent all her living living on positions that she could not be healed by anyone. She came up behind him and touched the fringe of his garment, and immediately her discharge discharge of blood was ceased. And Jesus said, Who is it that touched me? And all denied it. Peter said, Master, crowds surrounding you are pressing on you hard. And Jesus said to him, said, Someone touched me, for I perceived that the power had gone out from me. And the woman <clears throat> saw that she was not hidden. She came trembling and falling down before him, declared in the presence of all the people why she had touched him and how she had been immediately healed. And he said to her, Daughter, your faith has made you well. Go in peace. And while he was still speaking, someone from the ruler's house came and said, Your daughter is dead. Do not trouble the teacher anymore. But Jesus on hearing this, answer him, do not fear, only believe, and she will be well. And when he came to the house, he allowed no one to enter with him except Peter, John, and James, and the father and mother of the child. And all were weeping and mourning for her, but he said, do not weep, for she is not dead, but sleeping. And they laughed at him, knowing she was dead, but taking her by the hand, he called, saying, Child, arise. And the, and the spirit returned, and she got up at once, and he directed that something should be given her to eat. And her parents were amazed, and but he charged them not to tell no one what had happened. Mm -hmm. the, the woman's problem, they're making her unclean. Yeah. It's in Leviticus. Chapter 15, verse 25 to 31. Well, go ahead and read that for us. Now, if a woman has a flow of blood for many days, not during the time of her menstru menstruation, or she has a discharge beyond that period, as long as the impure discharge continues, she shall be as she is in the days of her normal menstrual impurity. She is unclean. Every bed on which she lies during the time of her discharge shall be to her like the bed of her menstrual impurities. And whatever she sits on it shall be unclean. Like the uh, uncleanness of her monthly period. And whoever touches those things shall be unclean and shall wash his clothes and bathe in water and be unclean until evening. And she is cleansed from her discharge and she shall count off her herself seven days and after that she will be clean. Then on the eighth day she shall take for herself two turtle doves or two young pigeons and bring them to the tree at the doorway of the tent of the meeting and the priest shall offer one of 
one is a sin offering and the other is a burnt offering and she shall make atonement for her before the Lord for her unclean discharge thus she shall separate the Israelites from their uncleanness so that they do not die in their uncleanness by the defiling my tabernacle that is among them so she had take two dirt doves of the temple and do a sin offering and a burnt offering you won't have I guess you'd stay unclean if she didn't do that I guess so and we will do that in the next session